The Mother of Invention Written and narrated by Annie Castonguay 1,000 words Written January 2016 Recorded July 2, 2017 The Mother of Invention As I watched the sunset on a beach I wasn't planning to go to, or only to catch a sunset, I couldn't help but wonder about all the events that conspired to bring me here today. A little less than a year ago, I attended a vision board workshop at a yoga studio I didn't frequent. It fell on the only free weekend I had on a seemingly infinite stretch of busy ones. I had been wanting to make one of those for the longest time, something ridiculous like eight years. This seemed like the perfect opportunity to get off my delusions and start creating the life I needed. I say needed because, frankly, I had no idea what I wanted my life to be. If you asked me what I most wanted to do before I die, I would have been hard-pressed to come up with something that didn't involve Johnny Depp. I realized it's not about what you want to do, but who you want to be. I wanted to change who I had become. I wanted to live. You will soon realize my favorite concept is perspective, and I am a glass-half-full kind of girl. I do believe that everything happens for the best, aside from death and sickness. Back to the vision board workshop. Despite the fact I was the only participant who showed up, the fellow whose name I forget but whose story I remember decided we'd go ahead and create our vision board. I was careful to select only images that stirred feelings in me. This one image, that of a young woman climbing a cliff, hanging in her harness high above the ocean, took up most of my board. I'd always wanted to be that girl. I couldn't pinpoint what defined her. That image might have been worth a thousand words, but it spelled fearless. I didn't realize it at the time, but this was the single image that shaped my future. Now, the old saying, be careful what you wish for, comes to mind. This image single-handedly destroyed the life I had so I could become that girl. Soon after, I traveled to Hong Kong to visit my friend Kim. It was a long time since I had traveled on my own. This was a big trip for me. Hong Kong and Japan, by myself. Hong Kong was super fun. My greatest accomplishment there was riding the scarier roller coaster at Disney, thanks to Kim's, um, let's call it, influence. After all, this trip was a present to myself for my upcoming 50th birthday. I had to do something crazy. I didn't know how such a simple thing would profoundly alter the way I looked at myself. Ever since I can remember, I've been looking for someone to do stuff with. I was an only child. I've always liked my own company. But I thought in order to do fun stuff, travels, etc., it was better to have someone to do it with. I thought I needed someone to help make these things happen until I realized the very people I relied on hindered my progress. I lived in a suspended state, regretting squandering my best years. As often is the case, fate stepped in. At a time I was yearning for change, my workload got significantly reduced in a way that created a four-month break. However, nothing might have happened if my partner of four years had not decided to call it quits a few weeks before my 50th birthday. So there I was, 50, single, and broke. It took me a few weeks to get my head around this, but once I did, I saw this incredible chance I was given. What was I going to do with it? Squander it? or do something I wasn't sure I was entirely capable of. 
I had been jealously following my friend Scotty's backpacking adventure through Europe, desperately wishing I had done something like that when I was younger. How I envied him and dreamt myself in the pictures he posted. As Dr. Seuss would put it, I had a thought and I thought it up quick. Maybe the idea of going on such an adventure wasn't so far-fetched after all. So I started looking at Europe, the cost of transit, the cities I hadn't seen. Then I thought, it's going to be winter. It's cold, the days are shorter, and my currency is low. Certainly those could not be perceived as positive points. The next question I asked myself should really have been the first. What is it I really want to see now? I love architecture as much as I hate museums. But what would I enjoy doing right now? Swim in the green or blue waters of several oceans. Obviously my destination had to change. Southeast Asia suddenly became very attractive. But where there? So I asked an expert. My friend Kate, whom I met through Ultimate Frisbee, has traveled extensively through Southeast Asia. She met with me, answered my questions, and put my mind at ease. Everything will be okay, as I'm reminded by my favorite band, serendipitously called Home Free. I took a leave of absence so I wouldn't get screwed while I'm gone, prepared my place for rental, and organized my affairs. I enlisted the help of one of my best friend, Donna, who would look after things while I was gone. It was time to decide where to go. If I was going to go that far, I was going to cross the equator. So I set sail for Bali, a small island in the heart of Indonesia. Wayan fetched me at the airport. I mentioned I wanted to catch the sunset on Kuta Beach. He offered to take me. I put on my swimsuit and off we went. I played in the waves and watched the sunset on the Indian Ocean. <laughs>